the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. Now the story about the madman and the pigs. When reading Matthew, I thought there was more than one madman. Multi-personality. Which is a real condition, but it doesn't have to be mad out of control. Most writers have to have, or they write because they're harboring a legion. If there is a constant arguing, six will drive you mad. An immoral framework and conduct diplomacy is required of every creature that lives and dies with other creatures. Now if Jesus can tell someone this, maybe that someone will believe it. I find multiple personalities, or characters, much more entertaining than television. But who wants to admit to those sexual desires we allow our brain to play with if we haven't managed to hold it in shackles? I'm going to conclude something very different just to throw you off. Jesus had no bloody right to send 2,000 pigs into the sea to drown. This bit of the New Testament is not true. The pig herders. Pig herders on the mountain. People please. The demons jumped out of someone's head and 2,000 pigs killed themselves? A pig does not care about humans. In fact, they likely find us disgusting. If the 2,000 pigs had screamed, we don't want to be butchered by the pig-eating Romans, Jesus Christ save us too, that I would believe. Because it is plausible. Everything that can be is plausible. Pigs do not run off the cliff. And if there are many who, and there are many who suspect that even, even lemmings don't have this tendency that people will believe they do if someone sees half a dozen jump off a cliff when big scary human monsters are chasing them. They aren't as clever as pigs, but suicidal tendencies is a very human thing and is directly related to self-awareness and lack of meaning. And had Jesus really managed to scare 2,000 pigs into suicide, I would be in the crowd that told him to go far away. Demons possessing pigs. Come, let it go. So Jesus went somewhere else. Who had that... Who had that put in there with the pigs anyway? Off with his head. Burn him. Smash his bones and burn him again. Christian soldiers is an oxymoron. Christian church is an oxymoron. The whole bloody royal family myth, bloodline nonsense is an oxymoron. Let me quote Gideon version once and we move onward. Verse 11, a great herd of swine feeding, uh, in verse 5, always, night and day, he was in the mountains, end quote, eating only mountain pig. Okay, here the story is, little daughter and she is 12, and Jairus, the high-ranking Jew, asked Jesus to bring his daughter back to life. He has trouble getting through the crowds and stops to take a, talk to a woman when her bleeding finally stops upon touching her robe. I'm not going to try to make it work. It is a mistake to believe miracles are things only Jesus does or that he could do anything regardless of laws of physics in combination with carbon-based self-reflecting primates. But whatever. Detailed distraction. The important point to note is that Jesus says, and even knows all along as he, as he takes his time to get there, verse 39, the child is not dead. She is only sleeping. End quote. And Mark is a strange fellow. I don't believe him that she is 12. Why? Well, it is too important for a story. This doesn't prove Jesus went to have a visit with his wife or girlfriend. But there is no denying the avoidance of the subject of sex. As if kids came from God or storks. Do we worship a child's fairy tale? I'm amazed, like everyone else.